So, let's go through some steps in the giving explanation session. First thing that you want to do is initiate the session by introducing yourself and build the rapport with the patient. Make sure you are in a comfortable environment and identify the patient's problem and concern. Next, you want to gather information. You want to explore their problems. How is it affecting their life? And make sure you include some open and closed questions. Try to be attentive and also determine the patient's belief, the worries and expectation throughout your history taking. Next, you want to provide a structure. Make sure you signpost them that you are going to explain the details. Assess for patient's prior knowledge and ask them how much they would like to know about the particular disease or condition. Next, explanation. Make sure you have an organized and systematic way of explaining. Provide the correct amount and type of information and make sure you assess the patient's understanding when Chung can chat. 5. Planning Make sure to involve the patient during your shared decision making when it comes to planning management and also check with patient's understanding and offer them the choice. Finally, you want to close the session with some safety net and summarizing the important points and checking finally with the patient if they have gotten everything clearly or not. And then you can suggest them some leaflets and website so that they, they can look further for extra information. Throughout the interview and consultation, you want to maintain the eye contact, you want to acknowledge the patient's feeling, deal things sensitively, especially when they are talking about embarrassing and disturbing topics, and try to pick up verbal and non-verbal cues. Use concise, easily understood questions and comments, and don't forget to summarize the session briefly and clarify the plan of care with the patient. Accept the patient's view about anything and also try to include visual methods such as diagrams, models to convey information to the patient. Alright, let's do some practice. Hello there, my name is Priya. I'm the FY1 doctor here in the urology department. May I just quickly confirm your name and age, please? Yeah, sure. Hello, doctor. I'm John and I'm 46 years old. Hello, John. Uh, let me just clarify some of your details. What are you working as? Sure, doctor. I'm a chemical engineer. All right. Are you married and where do you live? Yeah, I'm married with a beautiful wife and I have two lovely daughters. I live here by here at 21B Baker Street. All right. Okay. Um, thank you so much for confirming your details. So, how may I help you today, John? So, doctor, I'm a little worried about my health, doctor. Um, recently, my best friend, Yasid, was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And he's currently on chemotherapy. He's still very young. He's just my age. And yet he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So when I visited him in the hospital the other day, I saw this one pamphlet about PSA screening for prostate cancer. So I just thought it would be great to know more about this screening and whether can I have the screening test for myself just for reassurance. All right, John. First of all, I'm really sorry for your friend. Hope he gets well soon. I can see that you are very concerned and worried about the same fate. I will try my best to give you enough details and address your concern. Um, before we begin, what do you know about the screening test for prostate cancer? Yeah, doctor. So I read on Google that PSA is used to screen prostate cancer. So I thought by knowing my PSA levels earlier, I can at least seek immediate medical attention instead of getting diagnosed with it very late. Okay, um, first of all, there's currently no screening program for prostate cancer in the UK, which means it's not done routinely here. This is because it has been proven that the benefits 
outweighs the risk. It is mainly done for patients at risk of developing prostate cancer. How do we do that is basically by looking into their symptoms, their lifestyle, family history, and many more factors as well. And then we will make a judgment based on our expertise and suggest whether a patient should get the PSA test done or not. If you're all right with it, um, I would like to just ask you some further questions regarding your health to assess whether you really need the test or not. And then I'll continue explaining about PSA. Will that be all right with you, John? Yeah, yeah, sure, doctor, yeah. All right. Have you been going to the toilet to urinate more than usual? No, it's been normal. All right. Any frequent nighttime waking up just to pee? No such thing. All right. Any incident of leaking before like reaching the toilet or passing urine involuntarily without you even knowing? No, nothing of that sort. All right. Um, I have a few more questions, John. Do you have any difficulties when you urinate? Like, do you strain yourself to pee? No, it's been easy. All right. Um, what about the flow? Have you noticed any changes in the urine flow? Like, it has been reduced or it's a bit intermittent, anything like that? No, all of those has been normal. Okay, what about feeling after after the urination? Do you feel like your bladder is not empty yet, even after you peed? No, doctor, no, I feel normal. No, huh? all right, I have a few bit more to complete. Have you had any urinary infection recently? No previous urinary infections, doctor. Okay. Um, any underlying medical condition that you have? Yes, yes. Um, I have hypertension. Okay. I was diagnosed with it last year. And yeah. Are you taking any medications for that? Yes, yes. I'm taking amlodipine for that. All right. Are you taking them regularly? Any issues with that? Yeah, I'm taking the amlodipine regularly and I'm taking them daily. I'll never miss a tablet of them. All right. That's good to know. Um, any history of cancer in your family, John? No, not that I know of. No. All right. Uh, just going to ask you a bit uh, about how you're feeling lately. Any reason, loss of weight or feeling, you know, like really tired or feeling lack of, lacking of appetite or feeling feverish, any sort of thing? N nothing, nothing of that sort. All right, that's great to know, John. Uh, just going to ask you a little bit about your lifestyle, all right? Do you smoke? Yeah, sure. Yes, uh, I smoke around five sticks per day. Um, okay. I'm actually trying to bring the number down gradually, been working on it. Recently, oh, yeah. good, good, good job. That's good. Um, how about drinking? Do you drink alcohol? Uh, I normally drink occasionally during family functions. I'm not an alcohol addict, by the way, and I don't drink much at home too. Roughly right. like once or twice monthly, two to three glasses of wine, that's all. Okay, two to three glasses of wine, once or twice yeah. monthly. All right, all right. Any any illicit or recreational drug use? Oh, no, Doc, no, I don't take drugs. Huh? Okay, that's all for my questions. Seems like you're doing pretty all right. And I'm glad that you're working on your smoking. It'll be really good if you could fully stop smoking soon, all right? Yeah, doctor. I'll try. Okay, all right, John. I'll explain regarding the test to you now in terms of what it is used for, the benefits, and the drawback of doing them. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me at any time, all right? Okay, so PSA is called as prostate specific antigen. It is a substance actually made by the prostate and the main function of it is to liquefy or to make the semen more watery. So small amount of this PSA, they will leak into your blood. And that's how doctors use them to measure the level of PSA in the blood. All right, are you clear up to this point? Yes, uh, clear doctor, you can go on. Okay. So, despite being a cheap, readily available test, PSA is not a definitive test because a lot of things can elevate PSA, such as urinary infections, even exercise, ejaculation, cancer, and many more. The test is normally done in patients when they present with symptoms of prostate cancer 
And then based on the level of the PSA, we will plan for their further management. So in that matter, PSA can be useful because you get to look at the trend of the PSA level, whether it's increasing or decreasing. PSA is also unreliable because they can sometimes suggest prostate cancer when there is no cancer. So this is what we call it as false positive result. So according to latest uh, research and evidence, this can happen in 75% of cases. That's like 7 in 10 men having a false positive result when they check for PSA, test, uh, PSA level. At the same time, there is a thing called false negative as well. This can happen up to 15% of men. That's like 2 in 10 men. So they can have normal PSA level, but with prostate cancer. Um, are you clear so far, John? Yeah, but I'm just a little confused about the false negative that you were talking about at the end. False negative or false positive, sorry? False positive. Okay, yes, sure. Um, I know, it's a lot to take in. So, when a person has a positive PSA result, um, depending on the level, they need to go for scan or biopsy. So in biopsy, which means some of the tissue from your prostate will be taken to look for cancer cell. So false positive means your blood result is showing increased level of PSA, but your biopsy result, they might come back negative with no cancer cell in it. In this case, you would have spent your time, your money doing unnecessary invasive tests like biopsy or MRI and it causes more anxiety in patients. Besides um, biopsy, they can sometimes cause physical harm to the prostate as well. Do you get it oh. until now? Oh, okay. I, I, think, I think I've got it. All right. So uh, I found in the pamphlet that screening uh, has been shown to reduce a man's chance of dying from prostate cancer. Is that true, doctor? Yes, you're right. But that also means that many men will receive treatment unnecessarily. So I feel like there's, there's need to be more research done to actually determine whether the benefit of PSA tests, they would outweigh the harm of overdiagnosis and overtreatment or not. So overdiagnosis means people are getting diagnosed with cancer that would never cause any. Whereas overtreatment means patients getting treated unnecessarily for the tumor that's unlikely to be harmful. All right? Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I've actually known about this PSA test so much better now compared to before coming here. Great. Yeah, so what's your personal opinion of doing this test for me, doctor? Based on my judgment, you are considered as low risk of having prostate cancer right now. It is very unlikely for a patient to be symptom free and get the cancer according to the evidence. But if you are still not happy with information, it won't stop you from taking the test. It is our duty as a healthcare professional to provide you with enough information about this test so that you can take an informed choice whether to take it or not. Oh, all right. Well, um, after really understanding the whole thing, I don't think so. I want to do one. All right then, John. Um, just to make sure that you understand the whole picture, is it all right if you could just explain what you have understood from this consultation? Just to you know, make sure that I have given you all the all the necessary information. Sure, doctor. So basically, this PSA screening is an easy and affordable test to look for prostate cancer, but it is not very specific. And even though the result is positive, doesn't completely mean that I have cancer and Overdiagnosing prostate cancer can sometimes bring more harm than good. That's great. That's great. Awesome. So, is there anything else I can help you with, John? No, doctor. Um, you have been really helpful, and thank you so much for your time explaining this entire thing to me in a way that like, I can understand. No worries, John. No worries. Um, for just before we end our consultation, I would like to pass you some leaflets about this PSA test. And we have the NHS website, browse to more about PSA screening and prostate cancer during your free time, all right? Um, if you feel like you want to know more about the screening or you feel like you're 
experiencing any kind of urinary symptoms that I asked you earlier, like difficulty urinating or involuntary leaking or, you know, going to the toilet frequently, please come back or call the hospital Im immediately, all right? Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. All right, that's great. Have a lovely day, John. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor.